You're very welcome to our midweek Bible study from Solid Rock Drogheda. This is Upon This Rock. We're taking Mark's Gospel and we're taking it verse by verse. Uh, we're in chapter 9, this is episode 21, but before we get to the Word, uh, Janice is going to lead us in a worship song. So please worship along with us. <laughs> Thank you to Janice. We've now reached chapter 9 and uh, we started chapter 9 last week. We talked about the transfiguration of Jesus. We saw how that was a vision of the second coming and we're now rejoining it this week at Mark uh, chapter 9 
and starting to read at verse 14. What happened Im immediately after they came down from the Mount of Transfiguration? Verse 14. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. And as soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran, ran to meet him. So Jesus, if you remember, had three of the disciples up on the Mount of Transfiguration with him. That was Peter, James and John. And the other nine disciples were, were in trouble. And so Jesus and the three come down from this amazing mountaintop experience into a dispute and an argument and a mess in the valley. And you know, that's a real picture of what sometimes happens in our Christian lives. Sometimes we have a real spiritual high. We have one of those days when God just is moving and answering all of our prayers and everything's fantastic. And then it's like the next day, everything is everything's down and we're, we're going from the mountaintop to the valley. Well, that happened to Jesus as well. And so here the, there's uh, the, these nine disciples have been trying to cast out a demon from a young boy. And the religious leaders there are mocking them because they're un, apparently not able to cast the demon out. Now, interestingly, these religious leaders, they don't have the power. I mean, they're not casting the demon out either, uh, but they're making the most of this to mock the disciples and then Jesus comes down and it says that uh, as soon as all the people saw Jesus they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him in a conflict situation people need to see Jesus uh, very often we find ourselves in a conflict situation because we've gone into it in our own strength rather than in the presence of the power of Jesus. And when Jesus comes into the situation, then people want to hear what Jesus has to say. So verse, uh, verse 16, what are you arguing with them about, he asked. You know, the one thing, one of the things I love about Jesus is he loved to ask questions. He was the person with all the answers. More than any of us that have ever lived, Jesus had all the answers, but he asked questions he would draw out from people what it was they they wanted and what was happening inside of them and a man in the crowd answered teacher i brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech whenever it seizes him it throws him to the ground he foams at the mouth uh, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid i asked your disciples to drive out the demon but they could not so when jesus says what's going on the disciples could have prevent, presented their version, their spin on what was going on. The Pharisees could have presented their version attacking the disciples. But the best person to explain was the father of the demonized boy. Yeah, there's this stuff going on between the disciples and the Pharisees, but it's the, it's the boy that is important to Jesus. He suffered from this condition, which sounds very much like epilepsy but was more than a mere physical ailment. The Bible specifically tells us here and in other parallel passages that uh, there was a demonic spirit here at work. And the demonic spirit was a mute spirit or a spirit that robbed him of speech. Now, according to Jewish belief, this was the hardest kind of spirit to cast out because an important part of Jewish exorcism was you had to know the name of the spirit to cast it out. And so you had to ask the spirit what its name was. But with a mute spirit, the person couldn't speak to speak out the name of the, the spirit. So this was reckoned to be the worst kind of spirit to get rid of. Now, something else to notice here is this. The disciple says we couldn't drive it out. The disciples had already been given authority over evil spirits, but not all spiritual powers are the same. This was of a different order, on a different level to what they had been dealing with before. Uh, verse 19. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Well, well who's the unbelieving generation? It's you know, to, to say an unbelieving generation, it's not just talking about the nine disciples. It's talking about the Pharisees. It's talking about the crowd. You know, the whole thing here is just there's a lack of faith operating here. And Jesus wants to bring this back to the subject of faith. 
and uh, w then he took the, the boy and the father on one side. Now we know this because later on it's going to say the crowd came running to the scene. So he took them apart from the side, from the crowd. He took them on one side. And this is something we see quite often, Jesus doing this. And I believe one of the reasons Jesus did this was because he didn't want there to be in an atmosphere of mocking and unbelief. He wanted there to be an atmosphere of faith around the boy so that the healing could come. And it says, so, so they, they, they brought him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. Uh, he fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Immediately when the spirit saw Jesus, you see, the demons knew who Jesus was. <coughs> this demon knew that because Jesus was here, his time was short. The disciples, they would argue among themselves and eventually give a revelation from God as to who Jesus was, that he was the Messiah, the son of the living God. The Pharisees and religious, religious leaders refused to believe who Jesus was, but the demons knew fine rightly who he was. And this demon knew his time was short, and so he immediately throws the boy into a convulsion. In the short time he has left controlling this boy, this demon wants to cause more damage. It's pure evil. It's like Hitler fighting on and still costing thousands of lives when he knew the war was already lost. Just sheer evil. Verse, uh, verse 22 or 21. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? Uh, from childhood, he answered, it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. You know, behind these few words that the father speaks is a lifetime of suffering, a long history of pain and suffering. The child, the demon throwing him into fire and water and everything else, uh, his life hanging by a thread on many occasions. But the man says, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus immediately picks up on that phrase where he says, if you can, verse 23. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. And immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. The issue here, when, it, when he says, if you can do anything, he's like saying the issue here is God's ability. Now, the issue of the disciples might have been their ability, but now with Jesus, the issue here is not his ability. It's the, the issue is not God's ability. That's already settled. We know Jesus can cast this demon out. We know God has the power, given him the power to do that. It's man's lack of faith. That is the issue here. And so Jesus says, everything is possible for him who believes. And then this man comes out with this wonderful cry. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. So he's got faith, but he knows he's not got enough faith. I mean, he's put up with this for years. And so he takes the small bit of faith that he has and uses it to ask Jesus for more faith. You see, there's unbelief and there's unbelief. There's some unbelief, a willful unbelief, a refusal to believe on Jesus. The unbelief that condemns people to eternal separation from God is a willful unbelief where people choose darkness rather than light. But then there's an unbelief that is a simple lack of faith. It's not willful. The person wants to believe, but they're struggling to have the faith to believe. And that's where this man is at right now. Verse 25. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. So Jesus is wanting here a full and a permanent healing. He's not want the demon to be cast out and come back again. He's saying, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. And the boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. You know, often when we're stepping out in faith with Jesus, the worst test, the biggest test of our faith can be right before the moment of healing. 
Just when this man has said, I believe, help my unbelief, the demon now convulses the boy so violently that the onlookers are convinced that the boy is dead. And the father's looking at the boy saying, is that it? Has the demon killed him? But the miracle was taking place. And I've discovered that so often in my life. When I've trusted Jesus for something, it's like I'm tested on it. Sometimes you trust Jesus to do something in your life and it doesn't happen overnight. And sometimes once you start praying and believing and taking the steps you need to stay, take uh, biblically, things can even get worse for a while. Uh, it's that thing about it being darkest just before the dawn. And then they went indoors. And by, by the way, um, there's a school of theologians who believe that this happened near Capernaum and that the, the Mount of Transfiguration was not the traditional site for the Mount of Transfiguration that so many people uh, would travel to on tours to Israel and everything, Mount Tabor, but that this was actually a, a smaller mountain very close to Capernaum. And when it says that Jesus then went indoors, uh, he, he started going into the house in Capernaum. So verse 28, after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. Some, some manuscripts say by prayer and fasting. Uh, some just say by prayer. Now you might say, well, hang on, but they were praying. They were standing there. They were praying and praying and nothing was happening. Certainly this was a, a particularly powerful demon that was being cast out. But you know what? The word of God is more powerful than any demon. It doesn't mean that they had to pray over the boy for a long time because Jesus cast this demon out pretty much in an instant. It's When it says much prayer, Jesus isn't talking about standing much prayer, praying over the boy for a long period of time. Jesus is talking about the private time that we spend in prayer, seeking God's face, knowing his will, hearing his, his voice, stepping out in obedience to him. And that comes from much prayer. And so what Jesus is saying is that if we want to really be used by God, we have to spend much time in prayer. We have to build, our, as, as Jude says in his little letter, we have to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. Now we're going to cause a, call a halt to it there. Um, and and we will we we will come back to this again uh, next week. We'll start at verse thirty of Mark chapter nine. Uh, so I'd invite you to uh, to join us then. It's going to be the same time, seven thirty p.m. Wednesday evening, uh, same place. I'm going to be here in my study, and we'll look continue with our study of Mark chapter nine. Then until then, God bless you in Jesus' name.